Hi there. Welcome to this edition of Green Insights. Our topic is Lead for Neighborhood Development, Intersection Density. Thanks for stopping by. Intersection density is an important component of the Lead for Neighborhood Development rating system. The Lead ND program promotes walkable, mixed-use communities, multimodal transportation alternatives, and decreased automobile dependency. It is thought that increased intersection densities foster these goals. Some studies and observations suggest that increased intersection density increased walking, bicycling, and transit use, and decreased driving. The USGBC believes increased intersection density increases connectivity options, relieves traffic congestion, and reduces vehicle trip times and carbon emissions. It also has the effect of slowing traffic and creating safer, more, pe more pedestrian-oriented communities. Some have argued that increased intersection density results in more utility infrastructure, more street pavement, and more impervious area, all which seem to be counterproductive to sustainability. Higher intersection density does mean shorter blocks, and therefore more street network. So there is some validity to this argument. As is often the case, there are pros and cons with sustainable decisions and directions. In this instance, the cons such as increased impervious area can be offset by sustainable storm drainage design and by preserving more open space as a result of the denser development often created with increased intersection density. The other benefits previously mentioned also have to be considered. The originators of LEED ND have determined that the benefits of increased intersection density outweigh any detrimental effects. Within the LEED ND rating system, intersection de density is addressed in four different places. The first two are in the Smart Location and Linkage category. This category deals with the context into which proposed development is located. Prerequisite 1, Smart Location, is the first instance in which intersection density is addressed. One of the options to satisfy this prerequisite is to locate the proposed development in an area with a surrounding intersection density of at least 90 per square mile. In Credit 1, Preferred Locations, intersection density is addressed for the second time. One point is awarded for locating the proposed project in a surrounding area with an intersection density of at least 200 per square mile. Up to five points are awarded for a surrounding density of at least 400 per square mile. Two to four points are awarded for thresholds in between these two standards, as shown on the slide. The next place intersection density is addressed is in the Neighborhood Pattern and Design category. This category addresses project site design, so it looks at intersection density within the development itself. Prerequisite 3. Connected and open community requires projects with internal streets to have at least 140 intersections per square mile. For projects without internal streets, it requires surrounding area to have 90 per square mile, the same as in the smart location and linkage category prerequisite. Credit 6 within the neighborhood pattern and design category is titled Street Network. To achieve one point in this credit, the project must have a minimum intersection density of 300 per square mile. For two points, 400 per square mile are required. Now, if you're like me, it's hard to grasp or visualize these densities. What does 90 intersections per square mile look like? What about the higher densities of up to 400 per square mile? To answer these questions, I looked at a few areas within Charlotte, North Carolina, my current place of residence, which I thought would have high intersection densities. Remember, the smaller the block, the greater the intersection density. Downtown Charlotte has an intersection density of about 160 per square mile. Just south of downtown is the residential neighborhood of Dilworth. In selected areas, this pre-World War II subdivision has intersection densities on paper of over 250 per square mile because it has shorter blocks and alleys. However, many of the alleys are non-functional. Actual density within the entire neighborhood is probably closer to 150 per square mile. 
Adjacent to Dilworth is South End, an area consisting of redeveloping mixed uses. Intersection densities there are slightly above downtown Charlotte, with a wide range of block sizes, land uses, and a few alleys. To achieve an intersection density of 90 per square mile, the off-site prerequisite in the Smart Location and Linkage category, average block size must be approximately 400 feet by 750 feet. For a density of 140 per square mile, the on-site prerequisite in the Neighborhood Pattern and Design category, average block size is reduced to 400 feet by 500 feet. Going down the list on the screen, you can see that you must have significantly smaller blocks to achieve the different target densities to be awarded credit points. In Lead ND, intersections include streets intersecting other streets, alleys, transit corridors, and non-motorized rights-of-way. It excludes dead-end cul-de-sacs and gated communities. To achieve the higher intersection densities almost certainly requires some alleys to break up the blocks and perhaps some mid-block trail rights-of-way intersections. So, are increased intersection densities a good thing? In urban, small town, and mixed-use suburban areas, probably so. In strictly residential suburban areas, perhaps it's not as important, provided that reasonable connectivity through a grid-like street pattern is achieved. In rural areas, a conservation subdivision approach with large blocks and fewer streets can provide a good sustainable site development alternative. But if you want to pursue LEED ND certification, it is something that you are going to have to address and provide. Thank you for watching this presentation. Your comments and feedback are welcomed. If you have any questions or would like information about how Green Site Consulting and Design can help you with a LEED ND project, please contact us as shown on the slide. We offer more thorough presentations on the LEED ND program for interested developers, contractors, and design professionals. I am Rob Eggers, an accredited professional in LEED for neighborhood development, and again, I thank you for watching. Good day.